Hey everyone, welcome back to another mining chamber video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to effectively use your main PC for mining. Whether you use your PC for gaming or a workstation, this video will be able to help you to generate some income with your PC instead of having it on idle. I will talk about all the things that you need to know. So whether this will harm your GPU or should you be doing this, how much money you will be making and all this good stuff. So now let's get into the video right after the intro. The first things I'm sure that you have on your mind is that if it's safe for your computer and how much money can you potentially make. So let's answer these questions first before we move on onto the tutorial. Cryptocurrency mining is safe for your computer, it will not damage it or hijack it with viruses. So you don't need to worry about your PC lighting on fire because before you mine I will show you how to undervolt your GPU, meaning that you will reduce the amount of power that your GPU uses which leads to less amount of heat generated. You will notice a drastic difference between gaming and mining when it comes to heat. I will show you how to set the right settings for mining so later on you can switch between them easily when you want to stop mining. As for all these false flags that you usually get when downloading most of the mining softwares, the reason that you get these annoying false flags is due to mining software being used maliciously by other people. So if they flagged it multiple times, then it will be blacklisted by the antivirus companies. Now what you need to do to avoid this issue, you can make a folder, name it whatever you like, and then exclude that folder from your antivirus. So in this example, I have created a folder named miners and I put it on my desktop, and then I've excluded that from my Windows Defender. Now mind you that I only have Windows Defender as an antivirus, so if you have a different one as well, then you most likely will have to do the steps there too. In some other scenarios, you might be blocked from the browser itself without even getting to your downloads, and then in that case, you just want to click on view files, and then you want to allow it from your browser. The one possible thing that can actually go wrong is the chance of your system files corrupting due to crashing. So generally when you mine you apply overclocks and sometimes those overclocks are not compatible with your GPU, which will then lead to some blue screen errors and frozen threads. Since these blue screens force you to shut down your computer while it's on, it can lead to corruption on your SSD drive or whatever storage drive you have connected to it. Even mining with stock settings can lead to crashes on a higher rate, so that is why please make sure to follow the overclocks properly. And if you want to learn more about overclocks, you can watch the video I made previously on that topic, where we go in details on what to do if you can't find your right overclocks and how to fine tune your overclocks for your GPU. I will also be briefly going over that stuff in this video, just for a good enough amount so that you understand what you're doing when it comes to overclocking. Now since there are chances of blue screens that means you should definitely back up your important files and information to the cloud or any external storage before you mine. There is a way around having these blue screens and that is to use a Linux based mining operating system which I will cover more later on in the video right after we cover all the basics for mining in just Windows 10. This guide does not apply to Macs or any Apple device but you can try to hack your way through it so now hopefully that you understand the risk we can go ahead and talk about how much money you will be possibly making. The main factor for your profitability will be your GPU. So you can also use your CPU for mining but the GPU will be the biggest chunk of your profits and the CPU will be unnoticeable. In this guide I'm going to give you two ways to mine and one that focuses just on the GPU and the other one will use your CPU and the GPU. But I honestly recommend just doing the GPU if you're only getting like 5 cents a day from your CPU. And I'm not really a professional with CPU mining so unfortunately I won't be able to tell you how much your CPU is going to be able to make. But with the GPU mining I'll be able to give you good enough information so that you can find your way through. So the first thing that you need to know is you need to check which GPU that you have and how much is your memory size. Now if you don't know your memory size you can find this on GPU-Z so just download GPU-Z and then you'll see here memory size for your GPU. Now the reason that it's important to know your memory size is because some mining algorithms require a certain amount of space. So now for example if you take a look at Ethereum here which is the most profitable coin to mine for any GPU miner, it has passed 4 gigabyte size for the DAG file which means that you can't mine Ethereum anymore with any GPU that has less than 4 gigabyte of VRAM. Now there are ways around it for example zombie mode and all that stuff but it's very finite and it eventually will go to 0 mega hash for your Ethereum. So if you have less than 4 gigabyte VRAM then you will be mining different coins for example Ethereum Classic and Ravencoin and all these other coins. But if you have more than 4 gigabyte VRAM then you should be mining Ethereum because it is the most profitable coin to mine. 
Now in the end of this video, I will provide you guys with a lot of resources that go more in depth on the topics, for example the DAG size and why you can't mine Bitcoin with GPUs and all that stuff. So if I go through a topic pretty fast and you guys still don't get it, then please wait for the end of the video and then you can watch the video that goes into the topic more. So now that you know your DAG size, the next thing you want to know is how much money you'll be able to make mining Ethereum or all the other coins. So to figure out your profitability, there's multiple places you can go to and many calculators that you can use. One of the places that you can go to is miningchamber.com. I do have multiple different GPU overview articles here that you can click on and then you'll find multiple different GPUs and just pick the GPU that you're mining with. So for example, in this system that I'm running, I have a 5700, which comes very close to the 5700 XT. So now once you open Open up the article for the GPU that you're using you'll find a lot of information here and stuff that you need to know and if you scroll a further down you'll find here a calculator that will show you an estimated earnings for your daily income now this isn't going to be a hundred percent because all these profits do change very frequently so maybe one year from now you'll be making like three dollars or you'll be making twenty dollars you'll never know so now on my PC with my hash rate I know that I get around 50 mega hash for this GPU so if I'm mining with my computer I'll be making around six dollars and 20 cents a day that's if I'm mining 24 hours but since it's my main computer I'm not going to be mining 24 hours instead I'll be mining like half a day maybe a fourth of a day and then my profitability will reflect that way so if I mine half a day for example 12 hours then I would only make three dollars in some sense we will talk later on about overclocks and bias modding so now let's first cover the profitability and then we can jump to that section later on so if you end up not finding your GPU here, then you can use other resources, but eventually I am going to be adding a lot more GPUs here and I'm going to add a table full of GPUs with all their profitability as well as their efficiency. So the second resource that you can go to is Cryptex, the best GPUs for mining, which has a big table with a lot of different GPUs and how much money they make and the different coins that they can mine and how much hash rate they can get on there. So here you can see, for example, the NVIDIA RTX 3090, the price that usually you can buy it for is around $2,000. $2,300 and then the profitability will be around $470 a month. So you can change it here from monthly to daily and then you'll see how much money you'll be making and then the payback is just in how many days you'll be able to pay off this card. And if you have a 4 gigabyte card you can also find it in here so just scroll down and then you'll find here the 4 gigabyte cards and how much money you're going to make with them and then they're also here telling you to mine ravencoin with it because it is the most profitable for the 4 gigabyte cards for now and then there's also mining calculators and these calculators will just take a number of gpus so for example i would put here one rx 580 and then i can go ahead and do calculate with the electricity cost and then it will give me the estimated revenue as well as the profits after the electricity costs so this is another great tool that you guys can use and then like that hopefully you'll figure out exactly how much money you're expected to make just please keep in mind that these numbers do change very frequently they're not always the same and there is a lot of factors that play into your profitability the factors that impact your profitability is explained a lot in one of the resources that I will provide to you later on in the video so now hopefully you were able to figure out a good estimate for how much money you will be making now we can get started with the tutorial the first thing that you want to do is you want to make a wallet and this wallet is where you're going to get paid the mining money that you're making so for example here I'm using a wallet called Exodus and it has multiple different coins that you can store in here so I have my ethereum classic and I got paid a little bit of ethereum classic so you guys can see the balance here and then you can use this for any coin you're mining so for example ethereum you would be able to click on it and then click on receive and then you'll get your address for your wallet and that's what you're going to be using later on in the video so to choose which Whichever wallet you want to use you can go to miningchamber.com to the platform section and then here you'll be able to find different exchanges as well as some different wallets too so you can feel free to select whichever wallet you want to pick and then from there you'll be good to go so we're going to do this in two different ways the first way will be in your Windows 10 using two different mining softwares and then the other way will be through a Linux based mining operating system that you can boot from just a USB stick in this example we're going to use HiveOS but you guys can feel free to use any one that you want there are many out there but I do like Hive OS so I'll be using this one for this video. Now this guide will work with two GPUs or one GPU in your system but there are some additional steps that you need to take if you're planning on using two GPUs and we will cover that later on in a second part to this video which should come out very very soon so make sure that you hit the subscribe and the bell notifications so you get notified when that second part comes out. 
So the first thing you want to do when you're mining on your Windows PC is that you want to turn off your screensaver so that your computer does not go to sleep or goes to a screensaver after some time. So I generally have the sleep for never and then I have my screensaver after an hour but if I am planning to mine with this I will set it on never. And the reason that you need to do this is so that your computer doesn't go to sleep when it's mining and that would just end up turning off your miner. You can also go to additional power settings here and then after you go to additional power settings make sure you select high performance. And now after high performance go to change plan settings and then in here also change the turn off display to never and from there you can change advanced power settings again and we're going to change a couple of things here. So you want to go to your PCIe Express and then you want to set the link power state management to off make sure that it's set to off and if you're also using Wi-Fi then turn off the power saving mode for your wireless adapter. So set this to maximum performance. Now these will just help you avoid any issues that come to your Wi-Fi adapter or your PCIe Express slots going to power saving when your GPU is mining. Now just go ahead and hit apply and then after you hit apply you're good on this end and also sometimes you'll have to change your virtual memory settings and you can find that in your about tab for your system so just go a little bit further down and then click on advanced system settings and then from there you guys can change your virtual memory so you're most likely not going to have to change this but if you do get an error saying that you don't have a large enough paging file size then you can come back here and then just uncheck this and then set a custom size and the custom size would be around 4000 megabyte per GPU so I would just say 4000 megabyte here and then in the second one you you can say around 8000 and then you can set this in place. Now this will help you avoid that issue but only do it if you are actually running into that issue. So since I won't be running into that issue I'll just go ahead and hit cancel and I'll leave it as is. And now the last thing that we need to do before we start mining is the overclocking. So like I mentioned overclocking is very important when it comes to mining because it does help you use less power. So for overclocking you can do this in two different ways. So if you have an AMD GPU I would recommend using AMD Wattman that comes with your GPU drivers. So if you go to tuning and performance tab you'll find here you can set it to automatic or manual and we will be doing it manual because the goal is to reduce the amount of power that you're using and in return that helps you decrease the heat of your GPU which is super helpful for your hardware's health. And then if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can feel free to use MSI Afterburner, but just make sure that you're only using one overclocking software at a time. Don't use two of them because it will cause some conflict. So for example, I have right now two of them open, but I will be closing MSI Afterburner because I have an AMD card. Now you can use MSI Afterburner for AMD cards as well, but some GPUs are pretty limited for the core voltage and you might not be able to move them around there. And then you'll end up having to patch MSI Afterburner to be able to extend your functionality for your core voltage. So just for simplicity, if you guys want to use MSI Afterburner and you have core voltage option unlocked, then feel free to do that. And in most scenarios, this won't be unlocked in the first place. So you want to go to your settings and then in settings, you want to do unlock voltage control and then that will help you unlock that setting. And there's also another way to overclock your cards, which we will show in one of the mining methods. And that is through putting the information for your overclocks into the mining file itself. So for example, you guys can see here core clock 1350, core voltage 800 and stuff like that so we will get to that when we start mining with phoenix miner now before you start mining make sure you have your proper overclock set so now once you do have your overclock set for example here i have my overclock set for my 5700 gpu what you can do to make your life a lot easier is you can save your overclock profiles so you just hit on save profile and then say mining profile and then just save that so after you save your profile all you need to do is you can go ahead and load it anytime you want to mine and you can also just reset your settings whenever you want to get back to using your computer normally so if i reset my settings i can go ahead and start game or do whatever I want and then when I want to start mining again I'll just load my profile. This can also be done in MSI Afterburner so you guys can see here the save icon you can just change your settings around click the save icon select a profile and then you can just keep loading that profile whenever you want to mine. And if you want to reset your settings all you have to do is just hit on that reset and then hit the check mark and then you're good to go. So now that you have your windows all set up, you can go ahead and install the mining software. So like I mentioned, we are going to be using two different mining software. The first one will be Phoenix Miner and the second one will be Cryptex Miner. So mainly the difference between them is Phoenix Miner is less fees, but it does look intimidating to set up while Cryptex will potentially take more fees from you. But it is a super fast setup and it's super user friendly. They also have a lot of other perks for cashing out your money, which I will go over later on after I'm covering Cryptex. So you can watch both of the sections and choose whichever one you want to use. Both of them are completely fine options and you can use whichever one you like. So for Phoenix Miner, I have a full video explaining how Phoenix Miner works. 
so that's why I'm not going into details on Phoenix Miner, but I will give you equivalence for it if you're planning on mining Raven coin or if you're planning on mining other coins right after we set up Phoenix Miner for mining Ethereum on this PC. So like I mentioned, this video will be in the descriptions below and once you open up this video and I highly recommend watching it if you never used Phoenix Miner before, you can find the download link in the descriptions. So you'll find here the original Phoenix Bitcoin talk and then you're also going to find the mega folder for Phoenix Miner. So in the mega folder is usually where you will find the installation files. So as you guys can see here, there's multiple different versions of Phoenix Miner and it's always best to install the latest version. So there's Windows, there's Linux and then there's the checksums which I will talk about later on. So since we're on Windows, I will be installing the Phoenix Miner 5.5c for Windows. And now I already have this installed on my system. So like I mentioned before, I have a miners folder and then in this miners folder, I have different miners installed. Currently, I have the Phoenix Miner 5.4b, but I will go ahead and install the new one as well. So to download, you can just double click on it or hit on download. And then like I mentioned, guys, if your Windows Defender is blocking you in any way, make sure that you set the exclusion to your miners folder wherever you want to place it. So I have it on my desktop. So I would go to desktop miners and then I would save it right here. So now as you guys can see it says dangerous so brave has blocked it and now if you're getting this error you just need to go to show all and then in show all you want to say keep dangerous file and don't worry there is no viruses in it it's just a false flag. So go ahead and do keep anyway and then you should be set and it will show it to you in the folder. So now I have Phoenix Miner right here. I can just go ahead and extract all the files. Now in some scenarios, you'll have to use WinRAR or 7-zip to extract, but for now you don't need to use it. And then I'm going to extract it in the same folder that I'm in. So Miners and Phoenix Miner, and then it will leave it right there for me. Now, one thing I highly recommend doing before you run any open source miner like Phoenix Miner is checking your checksums with that miner. So you can find the checksums for the Phoenix Miner in the mega folder and once you open this up, you will find different algorithms with different strings next to them. So here you have SHA-1, SHA-256 and SHA-512. So what all these are is just basically a fingerprint for the Phoenix Miner 5.5c, Windows.zip or Linux or whichever version you want to install and that will confirm for you that you have the authentic one and it doesn't have any tampering in the code. So this is just one of the ways that you can keep yourself safe from downloading the wrong files. And all you need to do to check the fingerprint of the folder is you can go ahead and open up a command prompt. And then once you open up a command prompt, you want to go to your miners folder where you have your miners installed and you want to go to your zip folder. So just go ahead and right click on your Phoenix Miner folder and then hit on properties. And then after you hit on properties, just copy the location of the folder. Now there's many ways you can do this, but this is just one of the simplest ways I can tell you to do it. And then you can just go back to your command prompt and then you want to type in a command. The command is very simple. So all you have to do is type insert util and then dash hash file. And after dash hash file, you want to put in the path for your Phoenix Miner. So the first thing you should do is you, you can go ahead and do a quotation mark and then you can paste the path that you just copied. Copied. So after you paste the path, you'll see here it shows until miners. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it until the Phoenix Miner zip folder. So I can just go ahead and type in Phoenix and then hit tab. It will automatically fill in, but I'm going to change a couple of things here. So it says 5.4b because I just tabbed it and it selected the first option. So I'm going to do 5.5c and then I'm going to add at the end dot zip to make sure it's the zip folder. Now, like I said, usually you want to do this before you extract the zip folder. So now after you have your path for your zip folder for the miner in, you can go ahead and put in the algorithm, which in this case, it will be SHA-256. You guys can do any of the other algorithms, it's completely fine. And then you can go ahead and hit enter. So now you guys can see here, it gave you the fingerprint for the folder. And now you can just compare that with the other one on the website. So it ends with C2D and then we can go back to the website and then we can see here C2D. And then you can just compare the first three strings as well to make sure and you'll be all set. So this is a simple step to do, which also provides you peace of mind knowing that you have the official miner downloaded. So now you guys can see I have here Phoenix Miner 5.4b and Phoenix Miner 5.5c. And like I mentioned, just use the latest version. Don't worry about the 5.4b. Now, if you open up the Phoenix Miner folder, you'll see there's another folder within it. Honestly, I like to just drag this back to the miners folder so I don't have to open twice when I go to it. So now when I open up Phoenix Miner 5.5c, it'll automatically give me the content of the original folder instead of having two nested folders in each other. So now the first thing you guys will see in your Phoenix Miner folder is all these different files. Don't get intimidated by it. It really isn't going to be that complicated at all. So there's two things you need to focus on here. First, you have your Phoenix Miner application right here, and then you have your startminer.bat. There is generally two ways to run your Phoenix Miner, and it's either using a bat file, which will link to the 
application or running the application directly using the config file. So in the Phoenix Miner guide, I do go over this in details. And in this tutorial, we're going to use the config file because it is easier to set up that way. So in my config right now, I have my pools, which is dash pool. And then I set my mining pools that I'm trying to mine to. And then I also have my wallet address here and the name of the worker. And then I also have my overclocks for my GPU. So for you, it will be different values for your wallet because you're going to use your own wallet address from one of the platforms that I mentioned before. And then as for your worker name, you guys can put whatever you want. This is just my PC, so I'm naming it Workbench. You guys can name it whatever you'd like. And then down here, you have your overclock settings. So these are the overclocks for the GPU. And like I mentioned before, you guys can set them here or you can use AMD Wattman or MSI Afterburner, whichever one you like more. And then finally, you have the pools. So for the pools, I've recently did make a video on them going into details and it's the video that I've posted before this one. So I highly recommend checking that out to understand which pool you're going to be using. But honestly, since you're going to be mining on your PC, I would just use a pool like Ethermine and just make sure that you connect to the right region. If you go to ethermine.org website and then hit on start mining, you guys will be able to see here different regions. So just make sure that you select the region that's closest to you and then just put that in your config file. So since I'm in Canada, I will be doing us1 for ethermine and then i'm also putting a secondary pool which is like a failover so if this one fails then it would go to this one and that is also another us1 ethermine using the ssl now you guys can add additional arguments here but this should be all you need for one gpu now later on once we do cover two gpus i will show you guys more advanced arguments that you can use for two gpus so now that my config file is ready i can go ahead and run my phoenix miner and if you're planning on putting overclocks in your config file then make sure that you run this as an administrator because if you don't run it as an administrator it will cause some issues and your overclocks might not apply properly so the first time you're trying to run it you will see this right here windows protected your pc don't worry about this at all like i said it's another false flag so click on more info and then for more info you guys can hit run anyway so the first time it will run it will ask for some permissions you can just go ahead and hit allow access and now it will start mining for you so usually with phoenix miner it does take some time to auto tune so make sure to stay patient with it until it finishes auto tuning and then you'll have your maximum hash rate showing on the screen but just please remember to use the proper overclocks for mining if you don't use proper overclocks you will be overheating your card way too much and if it does ever crash on you just tune your overclock slightly and if you you guys are still confused about that make sure to view the video about overclocking and bios modding which i will leave in the descriptions below so since i'm currently recording my screen you guys can see here my hash rate did drop from 50 to 46 to 45 and that is because my gpu is being used and it's recording the screen as well as displaying on two different monitors so don't be alarmed if your hash rate is lower than usual now once you start mining don't expect to get income in your wallet right away it does take some time until you reach the minimum payment for your pool which you can find information on for how do mining pools actually work. And for as how to cash out your cryptocurrency, I will provide you guys a video later on that you can use to cash out your cryptocurrency. Now we can talk about the second software that we're going to use for mining on Windows 10, and that will be Cryptex. Cryptex is a pretty straightforward software that you install and you can run right away. It also supports CPU mining as well as GPU mining, which is really nice. So now to use Cryptex, all you need to do is create an account. I will leave a link in the descriptions below so you can make an account with Cryptex so you guys can feel free to use it to support the channel and then after you make your account just download Cryptex and then it will look something like this when it installs so you'll have your Cryptex application and then you can just simply run this application now before I run my Cryptex application I'm just going to apply my overclocks so I'll just go to Radeon settings load profile and then apply my mining profile so now all my mining overclocks are set in place and then I can go ahead and double click on Cryptex to run the application so once your Cryptex finish installing you will see something like this although you can see that i have a balance here because i did use cryptex to mine for a while but you will just have zeros in here and then you'll also be able to see your estimated profits per month so you do need to give it some time until it fully kicks in and then after it fully kicks in you'll be able to see exactly how much money you're expected to make now i honestly don't like this simple view here so what you can do is you can click on settings and then you can do pro mode in pro mode you can see so much more information so it will show you exactly what you're using and it's showing you what's currently mining so the best thing about cryptex is it does benchmark your gpu and cpu and then it selects the most profitable for them so right now you guys can see that my cpu is mining and it's making around six dollars and sixty cents per month and now we can see that the gpu is starting to kick in 
so just the CPU itself it doesn't make that much that's why I wouldn't stress the CPU for only six to seven dollars a month but for your GPU you can definitely make a good amount of money so you just want to give it some time until it averages out for the hash rate and now what you can also do for this is you can click on settings and then you can go down here and show minor windows and what that does is it will show you exactly what's going on so here we have team red miner and it's mining ethereum and then on the right side you have xmr rig which is mining monero with your cpu now that doesn't mean you're getting paid in ethereum and monero instead you're going to get paid just with bitcoin so it's very similar to nicehash in that sense that you're getting paid with one currency but we will go more over that topic of getting paid in cryptex in a little bit so now let's just let it run for a little bit until it averages out for the hash rate and then you guys can see the expected profitability per month for my pc so now after I finish averaging out, you guys can see here with 46 mega hash, I'm going to be making around $200 a month with this PC. And like I mentioned before, so it depends on how long you decide to mine for. This is calculating if you're mining 24 seven. So if you mine half a day, you'll make $100 a month and so. And it's super easy to set up. So there's also some additional settings for Cryptech. You can have it run with your windows and I would recommend turning that off. So you only turn it on whenever you want to turn it on. And then you can select here different miners, different algorithms and all that good stuff. So now what to do once you make a balance on Cryptex, you can go to available for withdrawal here and then you'll just be required to sign in into your account and then you guys can see here they have multiple different methods to get paid out. So they have getting paid out in cryptocurrency, either Bitcoin or Ethereum and then you can also get paid out in US dollars through Visa or MasterCard which is really awesome. So it's many different ways that you can get paid out from Cryptex directly to your bank account. Now that wraps it up for softwares on Windows 10. You have Phoenix Miner or Cryptex. You can also use T-Rex Miner, Team Red Miner and all these other options. They're very similar to Phoenix Miner. And also one thing that I should clarify is that you can use your computer while it's mining but I would suggest turning off your CPU first because if you do try to for example do any video editing or any internet browsing even with your CPU mining it can be very daunting so just turn off your CPU for mining and only mine with your GPU and then you can do anything you want obviously when it comes to games you won't be able to game but if you want to game you can just turn off your GPU as well and then game and then turn it back on when you're not playing now we can go ahead and move on to the Linux based operating system so now to mine with hive os all you need to do is download their image and then you can flash that image on a usb stick and from there you can plug in that usb and boot into hive os so i'm not going to go through the process of flashing the image on the usb stick and selecting the right image because i do cover that all in the hive os guide as well and this video is getting very long so i don't want to bore you guys with information that i've already covered so I will leave the link for HiveOS guide in the descriptions below as well and I highly recommend watching it if you're planning on using HiveOS because there are so many functionalities that we cover there about HiveOS and how to overclock there and all the good stuff that you need to know. So now as soon as this USB finishes flashing I'm going to boot into it and then I'm going to be running my PC on HiveOS whenever I want to mine. One thing you need to know about booting from a USB stick is some motherboards do need some settings to be changed to allow you to boot from a USB stick. Now if you try to boot from your USB and then it doesn't go through then just look into your computer model and then see what you need to do to change around in your settings to be able to boot from a USB stick. In my scenario I didn't have to do anything all I had to do was hit on the boot menu key and then I was able to select the Hive OS USB stick and then from there it booted into Hive OS and I was good to go. Now the only issue with this method is that you can't use your computer while it's in Hive OS because it's a Linux based OS that's made only for mining. So you will have to control your computer or tune it through your phone or through another device by just downloading their Hive OS app or going to their website and that will be similar to any other mining specific operating system. Now the bright side of this method is that you won't have to deal with any blue screens and it's protecting your main drive from any issues. If you have only one GPU then I would stick to Windows but if you have more than one GPU in your system System, then this method could be pretty nice. So now that we covered all the methods for mining, two in Windows and one for a Linux based mining operating system, hopefully you guys have a good idea where to start or a good option to pick from and get going. As for the resources that you should check out, there will be a couple of videos in the descriptions below that will explain parts for you in specifics. And I will also leave a link for Hashraptor's video on how to mine Ethereum on your Windows PC, which you guys can also get from it additional information regarding to this topic. 
So now finally we're back to the giveaway. I was supposed to select the winners in the last video but I've completely forgot so I'm really sorry about that guys. But I did select the three new winners for the unclaimed rewards from my last giveaway which are two packs of six risers and a $25 gift card for nerdgears.com. So I want to first thank you guys for voting on the poll and I'm glad to see how diverse it is. It's very awesome. And thank you for all the kind comments. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate it. So like I've mentioned I've selected the three winners and I've replied to you guys on the comments to make sure to watch this video so hopefully that you did get my message and you're here in this video please make sure to contact me at socanon at miningchamber.com with a screenshot of your youtube account as long as it has the same name and icon and it's coming from the same email that's showing in your account then you will be selected now if you're trying to imposter the winners just know that it won't work i'll be able to find out who's the winner or who's not the winner so i will be waiting on an email from you guys to claim your reward thank you everyone so much for participating i will be doing a huge giveaway on 50,000 subscriber milestone and then that one hopefully there will be a high number of winners and all of you guys can have a higher chance of winning something so now we can go ahead and wrap up the video thank you guys again for watching this video if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below and if you're new here make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video like i mentioned the second part of this video will be coming very soon it's probably going to be coming this week or the next week where you can learn how to use two different gpus on your gaming pc so thank you guys again and i hope you have a wonderful day